What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Molt Man episode. It is deer season here in Texas, and figured it'd be a good time to uh, show you guys how I clean a deer. Maybe a little informational video, people that don't know how to do it, or people that know how to do it and want to do it a different way, or see how it's done a different way. There's a hundred different ways you can clean a deer, um, and this is just one of the ways that I do it. I actually clean deer two different ways, but Hunter shot him a big doe this morning, and uh, we're gonna clean it up. So my preferred method is to gut the deer, hang it in a walk-in cooler for four or five, six days, and then skin it and break it down. But we don't have a walk-in cooler here. So we got a cooler full of ice, getting cooled down, chilled down. And uh, we're gonna get this deer up and I'm gonna show you how I clean a deer. But today's video is partnered with Schrade Knives. This is the Enrage 8, so this is the, the bigger version. Uh, I normally use the 7, but the 8 is awesome too. Uh, but right now they're doing, if you buy this knife or the 7, uh, you get three free months of Onyx Elite membership. It's included with the purchase of the knife, so I think that's really awesome uh, that they paired with Onyx and got that done. Obviously, we use Onyx all the time on this channel. Uh, anywhere that I go hunting, I use Onyx. So I'm going to break this knife open and show you the first steps of cleaning a deer. We do have this deer gutted. Uh, I like to gut them immediately if possible so um when you get them home and your deer is gutted that'll be a different video gut how to gut a deer but um i like to cut the hawks down so start above this and just go in and i cut down so i can peel that skin down we're also going to be showing you how to clean a deer without a gambrel so i use mule tape i don't have a gambrel here it's at the ranch this knife is mega, mega sharp. Just want to go through that. Don't cut that tendon. And you work that to where you made your initial cut in the butt. So then you're going to take your knife. And I cut away. I'll never cut into the hair if I don't have to. So you just go above that joint right there and then poke through and cut out a little sliver here and then we'll just work this skidding down to the hawks and then we'll hang her up that way we can really work with her and you don't get hair down on your meat because most people they'll Cut the hawks right here through the skin, hang it, and then when you start cutting all this, all this hair, this long hair falls down on your meat. And uh, it's no good. It's so hard to clean hair off of meat. So you want to keep it down to a minimum if possible. So same on this one. Down the back. Same thing on this side, just Daddy, are you skinning it and cleaning it, Daddy? Yep. Mm. Alright, so that's how we redneck it. Tie it to the ball hitch. Go up over a rafter, see purling. So now we're gonna take our knife. We got the, the other way that I do it is if she's not gutted, I'll take down right here on one side and down right here on the other side, and then that whole strip in the middle comes out. But take your knife, do the same thing you did on the back hawks, do it on the front hawks. Take your knife, run it up that leg, right up to where it's cut into the brisket. Both sides. And then you can cut the joints or you can just take a pair of loppers or a saw and cut these off, legs off. Just like that. So, so now you're going to lop the top legs off, 
come right in here at the joint, break those, and then you can cut the rest off with the knife. Just like that. Cut those legs off. Make good dog shoes. Dog shoes? Not dog shoes, dog shoes. <laughs> so we got all our legs cut off. We got our line cut from the back of the legs down to the butt on both sides. This one's not cut all the way. Mm. Now we're just gonna start peeling. We're gonna start working this skin once you kind of break it free from that sinew, you can pull on it a little bit. Make sure you have it tied off to the hitch nice and tight. That skin gets pretty uh, pretty tough when you get back towards the, the butt. So you're going to want to use your knife to work it down to the tail. Got the skin worked down both legs. You're going to come to the tail and cut straight down to that tail. You can find where it separates and pop through that tail. So there that tail's hanging off. And then you can use that tail to pull down. Kind of work this skin down all over. Gonna need to raise her up some more though. Getting it worked down. I like to help out these front legs or else your skin will get kind of that skin will hang down and, and kind of prevent you from seeing where everything is. So on these legs, you can just skin on either side of them. Just like that. It'll come with it. Daddy, you get to some hang ups where you got to use your knife, but for the most part, a lot of pulling and just a little bit of cutting. I've got it skinned down to the neck. Try to get as much neck meat as you can, and then I'm just gonna wanna cut that hide off. Cut all the way around that neck till you hit the bone. And then we'll take the loppers and snip that as well. Just like that, there's your skin. Goes to the gut pile. Now I'm gonna show you how I break down a deer. I do front quarters, back straps, ribs, tenderloins, and then I debone the uh, back quarters. It just makes it easier. Um, I do all my own processing, so uh, it makes it a lot easier for me to separate the muscle groups whenever it's already deboned. So I like to take these. Cut these down. This all goes into grind. That'll go in the cooler. Get any dirt or hair that you see off. It's all grind meat. And then a front leg is super easy to take off. Just pull on it. Keep your knife blade up against that rib cage. Follow it all the way. You can take neck meat with it too. All the all my front quarters go into grind anyway, so let's so go on the cooler. Same on this side. Helps if you have a helping hand. Break that other front quarter off. Now we're going for the tenderloins. These two right here are your tenderloins. You actually have two little front tenderloins as well, but on a deer they're not really worth getting. 
So these tenderloins, you just take your knife, score down that side, and then a lot of times you can pull minor cuts. You can kind of work them out with your hands. I just like to stay as close to the bones as possible, get as much tenderloin meat off as possible. It goes up into that back ham. So there's one beautiful white tail tenderloin. All nice, same thing on this side. These will be good for the cast iron or the grill today. It's good meat right there. Now we'll come around to our back straps. They stop right here. You can feel this bone right at the top of the hip. So I like to cut in right there at that bone. Go all the way across. And then you're gonna follow that cut down that back, down that back bone. Just like that, and then I like to score that side of it. Just take your knife and just like the tenderloin, stay as close as possible to the rib bones as you can. As you're working this back strap out, keep some pressure on it, and it'll tell you where to cut. You don't really have to cut, you just kind of touch it with your knife. You can see how nice and clean that's coming out of there. And I'm not really doing anything with the knife, just tapping it. Just like that ends at the neck and there's a beautiful white tail back strap and there's another beautiful white tail back strap you can pull this silver skin off the back that's another strap for the cooler. All right, so deboning your back quarters. Um, I don't know the terms of all these bones, but there's a bone that comes out right here. So you want to go in and around that bone and back into the backbone, just like that. So you make that cut right there. Then you're going to come in right here where this joint is and I cut straight down and then you can cut this joint off as uh, Asabuco or whatever you'd like to use it for a lot of people use it for just bone broth or stock so that'll go in the cooler so once you cut that off this bone right here runs straight in so I'm gonna take our knife find that bone and run it down that bone just like that. So now what you can do, run your blade down that bone, up and over, and this back quarter will start peeling off. So there's your back quarter basically hanging right there. You kind of let the gravity pull it down and you can work it up right against that bone. So 
there's a boneless back quarter pretty easy and then anything that's left on the bones you can either cut the bones put them in your cooler use these for stock or broth and then if you don't want to do that you can sit here and just trim off this little stuff for uh for grind So same same deal on your leg that's hanging you're gonna make the same cut you're just not gonna pop that joint off you're just gonna work around so made my cut down on that bone I'm just gonna work it around Your other boneless back quarter in the cooler and that's pretty much it the rest is just going to be trimming off uh, the rib meat the neck meat and that all just goes into the grind bucket so that's how I clean that's how I skin and quarter up a deer uh, if I'm at the deer lease or if I'm at home if I'm at the ranch we'll let it hang in the cooler for a couple days but that's how I do it hope you guys enjoyed it Maybe you learned something, maybe you didn't. Leave it in the comments because I'd like to learn other ways to do it, better ways to do it. If you can explain a better way to do it in the comments, please leave a comment. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say and what you guys do uh, and have learned from your grandpas and dads and all that stuff. So um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Check out Shrade Knives, linked in the description box. Get your free three months of Onyx Elite. Um, that's going to wrap it up. Hope you guys have a great Sunday. And until next time, hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and remember, eat good. Right.